Hello, my name is Steve Jans, and welcome to my bond redemption question. Bond redemption, especially in the middle of a period, is a challenging calculation. I'm going to help you out with that calculation. We've got two templates here that will help us create the two proper journal entries related to that bond redemption. Now, at this point in time, you are familiar with the question. You've calculated whether the bond is a premium or a discount. You've completed the effective interest schedule. You've also done the first bond interest payment entry. Now you have to deal with the bond redemption. So let's take that information from the second period in your effective interest schedule and put that information into our two templates, create our two journal entries and get 100%. Let's get started. So if we take a look at the effective interest schedule. The information, as I mentioned, comes from the second period. So the interest is 191,214. I'm not going to put the pennies in here. You guys can see that with the solutions. The cash payment, 240,000. And the bonds payable, 48,786. Now what we do is we take this information and we multiply it. We multiply it a couple times. But what do we multiply it by? Well, the first part that we multiply it by is the period portion. So what we have to do is we have to calculate how much time has occurred in the bond redemption part. So if the bond, for example, paid interest on December 1st, which is this question, and the redemption is going to occur on March 1st, we have to deal with December, January, and February. That's three out of the six months. That's how I get 50%. So if I take those numbers now and I calculate 50% of that, here's what I get. 95,607. And I get 120,000 here and 24,393. Now the next calculation I have to do is I have to calculate the percentage buyback. And if you take a look at the question, we're going to buy back 2.4 million out of the 6 million bonds. So 2.4 divided by 6 is how I get 40%. So take this number, multiply it by 40%. 38,000, 2, 4, 3. And again, there might be rounding errors here because I'm not showing the decimals, and that's fine. 48,000 for my cash payment, and 9757 for my bonds payable number. Now that I have these final numbers, I can use them to complete my first journal entry. So I'm going to have interest expense 38,243. I'm going to have bonds payable of 9757. And the final number will be cash, 48,000. So great, we now have the first journal entry done. And we use this template to help create and generate those numbers. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at the gain loss on the bond redemption. So looking at our effective interest schedule, we take the starting value for the period. So we'll take 6,373,000 816. And again, I'm just rounding, but I'll just put the pennies in here just to show you the pennies if you'd like. So again, that is our starting value. Now we know that over time with premiums, we take the value down. With discounts, we take the value up. So that's why I have this negative here. And it's a good little memory tool when you put into this template so that premiums, I know I'm subtracting. Discounts, I know I'm adding back. So in this case, I would put in 24,392 and 75 cents. Again, in this one, I'll show you the pennies. Now, where did this number come from? Right here, there's that number. It's basically my bonds payable amount times 50%. That's where I got that number. So my subtotal will be 6,349, 
two, three. Now my percentage buyback, we've already calculated, is 40%. And then now my total will come out to 2,539,769.69. Now in the question, part D of the question, it says that you paid 2,575,000. So cash, 2,575,000. Now the value of my bonds is 2,539,769. So the difference between these two represents a loss on redemption. And losses are on the debit side. And that is equal to 35,230.31. And overall, that will give you now your second journal entry. So these two templates will help you take a really challenging part of a question and allow you to get 100%. Have a good day.